Excel tutorial multicollinearity test. Multiple regression assumptions consist of independent variables correct specification, independent variables no linear dependence, regression correct functional form, residuals no autocorrelation, residuals homostaticity, and residuals normality. This topic is part of multiple regression analysis with Excel Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. No linear dependence or no multicollinearity consists of regression independent variables not being highly correlated. This is evaluated through multicollinearity test, which consists of calculating an invariant correlation matrix of independent variables and assessing its main diagonal values. If main diagonal values are greater than 5 but less than 10, independent variables might be highly correlated. If main diagonal values are greater than 10, independent variables are highly correlated. Great, so let's go into our Excel file so that we can study no linear dependence through multicollinearity test with greater detail. Excellent, so here we are within multicollinearity test Excel file. So the first Step is we're going to study multicollinearity test data within its corresponding worksheet. As we can see here, we have the first column as dates, these dates with a monthly frequency, and they are from the beginning of 1997. So we select here A6 and then press Ctrl down arrow, and they go all the way into the end of 2016. Therefore, we have 10 years of data with a monthly frequency. So we press Ctrl up arrow, down arrow to go into the beginning of the column. And then column B that has that corresponding green color background that corresponds to this multiple regression dependent or explained variable of stocks. And this corresponds to SPY ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the Standard Poor's 500 index. And this corresponds to its adjusted close prices, monthly arithmetic rate of return. Adjusted close prices because they were adjusted for dividends and splits. And then here we have colored in red all the independent or explanatory variables. So first of all, we have within the rates area, the effective monthly yield of one year treasuries, 10 year treasuries and high yield corporate bonds. Then we have prices, which corresponds to, first of all, the arithmetic monthly inflation or deflation of CPI or consumer price index, PPI producer price index, and the arithmetic monthly return of oil prices. And last, within the macroeconomic area, we have the arithmetic monthly change of industrial production index and PC or personal consumption expenditures amount. So now that we have this data ready, we can continue within multicollinearity test worksheet. So within it, the first step is we need to calculate the correlation matrix of independent or explanatory variables, and then we can calculate the inverted correlation matrix. So as we can see, the way we do a correlation matrix, as we can see here, is we have as row names, the names of those independent or explanatory variables from one year treasuries to PC or personal consumption expenditures, and the same for the name of the columns from one year treasuries to PC or personal consumption expenditures. Notice that this correlation matrix has a principal diagonal right here, in this case with all the values at one, and then we have the upper triangle right here being mirrored by the lower triangle. So as we can see the value for one year treasuries with 10 year treasuries is the same as the one for 10 year treasuries with one year treasuries and so on. So the way we calculate each of this is first we select B7 as we can see within the formula bar we use the built-in Excel function of correlation with C-O-R-R-E-L and what we do is from multicollinearity test data we select and we can see here from column C row 6 to row 245. So at column C is where we have the data for the one year treasuries. And then we have comma and multicollinearity test in this case also with that C from 
row 6 to row 245. So that's the correlation between one-year treasuries and one-year treasuries. So notice here that we fix the values for both columns and rows in both of them. This is done by pressing F4 on the keyboard or adding the dollar signs manually before columns and rows so that we can copy the formula to the right. So if we select, for example, here C7, we see that we have correlation between multicollinearity test data from C6 to C245 and comma, but in this case with column D, where we have the corresponding 10-year treasuries. So just double checking and going back into multicollinearity test data, we can see that at column C we have one-year treasuries and at column D we have the 10-year treasuries and so on for the rest of this row. To calculate the correlation matrix for the following row, the one for the 10-year treasuries, we begin again at the principal diagonal. So we select C8 and we calculate correlation. In this case, multicollinearity test data, we're fixing column D, where we have the 10-year treasuries from row 6 to row 245. And in this case, we're also comparing it with row with column D from row 6 to row 245. So we're calculating the correlation of 10-year treasuries with 10-year treasuries. That's why we have the value of 1. But if we select, for example, here B8, we see that we're comparing column D with column C, where we have 1-year treasuries. And when we select column D, as we can see here, we are comparing the 10-year treasuries with high yield, which are found at column E right here, and so on for the rest of this row. And the last we're going to check here is high yield. Again, we begin here with the principal diagonal or main diagonal value. And at the D9, we see the correlation between multicollinearity test data, column E, where we have the high yield. And in this case, we're also comparing it with column E. That's why we have the value of one. But as we can see, if we copy the formula to the left or to the right, the first value to the left here, as we can see, it's correlation between column E, where we have the high yield with column D, where we have 10-year treasuries, and to the right, right here, it's multicollinearity test column E, where we have that high yield, and column F, where we have CPI. So just double-checking here and going back, we can see that at column E, we have high yield, and at column F, we have CPI. And then here, we can see column D, 10-year treasuries, and column C, the one-year treasuries, which we already studied previously. So once we finish building all this correlation matrix, we can continue calculating the inverted correlation matrix. To calculate this inverted correlation matrix, we need to select the full area. So notice here, we have exactly the same dimensions and the same names for the row names. We have one-year treasuries to PC or personal consumption expenditures, and for the column names, also from one-year treasuries to PC or personal consumption expenditures. So we select the full area, and the calculation of that inverse correlation matrix is done, as we can see here, equals to M inverse. That's the calculation of the inverse matrix. That's a built-in Excel function from B7 to I14. So as we can see here is all the values right here within that correlation matrix. So from B7 to I14 right here. A very important observation is that for the calculation of this correlation matrix, we need to do the calculation through an array. So once we input the formula, instead of pressing the Enter key on the keyboard, we need to press Control Shift Enter. And we double check that the array has been correctly calculated with the Kirby brackets at the beginning and at the end of this formula bar. Excellent. So again, here we have within this invert correlation matrix, the principal diagonal values here. In this case, they've already been previously formatted with that blue color background. And then we have the upper triangle here being mirrored by the lower one. And as mentioned here, we can see the value here of one-year treasuries with 10-year treasuries is the same as the one for 10-year treasuries with one-year treasuries and so on. That's why the upper triangle being mirrored by the lower one. But for the corresponding multicollinearity test, we need to focus on the inverted correlation matrix. And specifically, we need to focus on the principal or main diagonal values right here, the ones which were highlighted with a blue color background. Excellent. So now that we've finished studying multicollinearity test, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. 
Okay, so with this we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.